Somewhere in a messy apartment, our main girl Mirai is sitting looking a little depressed. Just then, Mirai's phone rings and a woman named Izumi Nase calls her to her mansion. There, Izumi introduces Mirai as a spirit hunter and the successor to some cursed bloodline. Apparently, Mirai can forge weapons out of her blood and use them as a lethal poison. She demonstrates it by removing her ring and using the blood. Izumi gives Mirai a target to assassinate, an immortal half-spirit who's terrifyingly fast to recover from any injury. Hence, he has the name Akihito, the immortal half-shade. Izumi reveals that Akihito is half-human and half-shade from some place called Beyond the Horizon. He's so powerful that he nearly killed Izumi's brother, another shade hunter, during a fight. Elsewhere, Akihito, the immortal half-shade, sees Mirai on a rooftop. It looks like she's about to jump and take a shortcut, from the roof straight to the afterlife. Akihito runs to Mirai. Her boy is actually a huge glasses simp and thinks Mirai looks good in them, and she must not die. Yes, that's his reason for saving her. The dude actually gives a heartfelt speech as if he's asking for world peace. To his shock, Mirai jumps back and stabs Akihito, and I thought the worst your crush could do is say no. But Akihito just smiles and politely asks her to remove her sword. This is going to be a long story of chasing and stabbing, and them destroying properties and their stupidity. So they make an agreement. Mirai won't attack him if Akihito feeds her dinner. And I thought only Tinder dates tricked you into buying them dinner. No? Just me? Okay. Anyways, in a restaurant, they argue about him feeling pain when she stabs him all the time, and how it is not fair and flat out calls it discrimination against immortals. So Mirai orders more food because he's being unpleasant. Hashtag couple goals. Later that night, Mirai becomes anemic because she's used up a lot of her blood, which is troubling to Akihito. He tends to her wounds even when she warns him not to touch her blood at the moment. While tending, Akihito suggests Mirai to join the literary club because he wants someone with glasses in his club. The other members of the literary club are also shade hunters, so Mirai will be comfortable there. But she declines as she does not want to associate with other people and then she faints. The next morning, Izumi discusses Mirai's progress and ways she can kill Akihito and also suggests she keep her distance. Later, Mirai has a flashback where she and Akihito discuss how she's scared to take lives and wants to quit, but her cursed bloodline and powers refrain her from doing so. Akihito empathizes with her. Elsewhere, an investigator from the Spirit Hunter Association's Observation Bureau – wait, that's really the name? They might as well add some words, jeez. Anyway, an investigator from this place named Miroku meets Izumi to investigate the Hollow Shadows, which are masses of human resentment, pain, and negativity. The most powerful one is called the Beyond the Boundary, and it is actually Mirai's mission to kill the Beyond the Boundary. Later, Mirai and Akihito go to a forest to hunt down one such hollow shade. Mirai asks Akihito whether she looks normal to him, to which his reply is like before, because glasses. Suddenly, a hollow shadow stabs Akihito from behind and takes over his body. So Akihito asks Mirai to stab him. Mirai hesitates as it might kill him, but Akihito argues that he's immortal. With much encouragement from Akihito, Mirai stabs him and releases her blood, forcing the hollow shadow out of his body. Mirai kills the shadow and goes towards the injured Akihito, but she's stopped by other shade hunters, the members of the literary club and Akihito's friends. One of them is Izumi's brother, Hirumi Nase. Hirumi says that Akihito's body is too weak right now, so his shade half will take control now. Akihito's shade half is actually super powerful, and despite the combined efforts of all the shade hunters, he still manages to defeat them. Mirai, however, hugs him and holds him down until he comes back to his senses. Akihito wakes up and becomes guilty of hurting his friends again. Later in a restaurant, Akihito asks Mirai whether he seems like a normal human, to which she says he's an ill-mannered boy obsessed with glasses. So yeah, pretty normal teenage behavior. During a lantern festival, Mirai tells Izumi while staying true to her duty of defeating Shades, she has decided to not kill Akihito. While returning home, the group discusses Lull, which is a special time in the evening when all shades are weakened. One day, Akihito becomes extremely weak, so Mirai and the others take care of him. Mirai's childhood friend, Sakura, tells her that she should stay with Akihito as long as she likes, as he loves glasses, to which Mirai explains that Akihito makes her feel normal. That night, Akihito's shade half takes control again and destroys the building. He fights Izumi shortly before escaping. So, the Shade Hunters break into Akihito's apartment, only to discover his perverted side, which is, of course, related to glasses. The dude is such a professional pervert that he has whole ass dossiers about spectacled girls and he rates Mirai as an 83% beauty. Next morning, Izumi informs Mirai that the lull will impair all dream sheets, even the powerful Beyond the Horizon. Mirai can take advantage of this and draw out the Shade side of Akihito without killing him. However, the Shade will take over her body and she herself might disappear. Mirai agrees to this, so Izumi gives his location to her. 
Mira finds Akihito in a deep forest. There she removes her ring and brings out her blood. He attacks her and they get into an epic battle. But Akihito is in a weakened state, so Mirai manages to defeat him. Akihito wakes up in his bed and finds Mirai taking care of him. Mirai explains that his wounds will heal after the lull is over. She serves him an omu rice with a boiled egg, which should be a crime. After some time in the library, the windows suddenly start projecting the fight between them. Mirai explains that her main objective was to kill the dream shade from beyond the horizon, but it turned out to be the shade within him. So when she found out her blood could draw the shade out of him during the lull, she took her chance and disappeared. Right now, he's still unconscious, and the Mirai sitting in front of him is a dream, caused by a little ounce of her blood left inside him. She tiptoes her feet and gently kisses him, bidding him a difficult farewell. Akihito rushes to hug her, but she disappears. Akihito wakes up in a hospital bed and learns that he has been in a coma for three months, that Mirai is really gone. Meanwhile, Mirai is in the world beyond boundary and wearing black spectacle glasses instead of her normal red ones. Here, Akihito is mindless and does not respond to her. She's also busy fighting shades. In the current world, Akihito learns that he no longer has a shade inside him. Akihito blames Izumi for leading Mirai to take the sacrifice. But she explains that as a member of the Nasi family, it's her duty to keep everyone safe. And as for Mirai, she did this to protect someone she cherished and her actions probably saved the world from the shade beyond the boundary. Izumi tells Akihito that Mirai knew he would be upset with her after he woke up, and her last words were, serves him right. Later that night, Sakura furiously asks him about Mirai's whereabouts, to which he turns his back, so he gets served with a nice little dropkick. While going through his phone, he finds he has text messages from Mirai before she disappeared. While we see Mirai beyond the horizon fighting shades, Akihito reads her text about how she's happy to have met him, and how glad she is that she stuck around up to see the day when she saves his life. She no longer believes that her powers are a curse, but actually, a gift to protect people. She wishes him a normal life and a normal death someday. Meanwhile, Mirai is trying her best to protect the mindless Akihito. In the current reality, the guys see a strange object in the sky, which is sucking the dream shades into it. They head towards the literature club room at where they meet Yayoi, Akihito's mother. Yayoi reveals that Mirai is alive and fighting all the dream shades alone beyond the horizon. She reveals that the way to go to Mirai is by fusing with a shade stone that got detached from Akihito during the Hollow Shadow incident, getting a hold of the mindless Akihito in that reality. The shade stone hurts Akihito, but he still powers through. As they're about to leave, Izumi enters and warns Akihito he's not immortal anymore, to which he says he's a pervert who would do anything for a spectacled beauty. Using the shade stone, Akihito enters the other reality. While Mirai is fighting for her life, he fuses with a mindless Akihito. Then he catches a Mirai as she's falling. Seeing Akihito there, Mirai gets furious as her actions were in vain. Hearing so, Akihito becomes furious as well and explains he does not want a life that was built on her sacrifice. A future like that holds no meaning. They launch forward to fight the Dream Shade. Mirai explains that everything around them was being harbored inside him, hence its weakness must be the same as Akihito. He tries stupid things like shouting the name of fish dishes like Caitlin with Roe, only to get attacked. So random. While defending them, Mirai slips. In order to protect her, Akihito launches forward, turning his end to the Shade's hand. Eventually, with Akihito's help, Mirai reaches the core of the Dream Shade. Feeling optimistic, she charges forward, slashing into the core and destroying the entire Beyond the Horizon. Suddenly, they wake up in a dark place surrounded by ghost-like figures, calling them names. Akihito realizes they are his memories that might create Dream Shades if hatred takes control. As they defeat the memories and come back to their senses, they are surrounded by thousands of Dream Shades. One by one, they defeat all of them until it becomes a pretty scene. Suddenly, a huge hand launches towards them immediately stopped by Akihito. He fights himself and accepts all the negative emotions are a part of him as he's the immortal half-shade. Then, Mirai asks him to pat her head and asks for his gratitude. So, he thanks her and his acts make her happy and she starts to crumble away along with the world around her. She thanks him for everything and leaves her ring behind. In order to get the ring, Akihito jumps off the world, landing in the real world. The world goes back to normal where everyone goes their own ways. Hirumi takes over Izumi's role as head of the Nasi family. However, Mirai is no longer here and Akihito believes that a future built on her sacrifice holds no meaning at all. Here, the story comes back full circle as the ring in Akihito's hand disappears and he runs to the roof. Mirai is right there, waiting for him. So he confesses his love for the spectacled beauty and gives her red glasses to wear. She wears it and smiles at him. But in the post credit scene, Mirai sees all her memories, but they all start fading away. She does not remember who she is, nor who Akihito is. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.